think about our roads and how do they flow better because at the moment there are pinch points that you know we know we all know where they are and the traffic doesn't flow through we need to think about how we make those uh, those roads uh, work better but there are other things that we need to do as well so take for instance bus services it's to the great credit of Sir Richard Lee, Sir Howard Bernstein, Lord Peter Smith and others, that the leaders of the city region, that they made the devolution deal conditional upon new powers to regulate our bus services uh, in Greater Manchester. Since deregulation of the buses in the mid-1980s, if you had a graph here that showed bus usage since that time, what you would see is that bus usage has gone down and down and down since deregulation. Uh, in the um, in the mid 1980s, what we have is a free for all, basically in parts uh, of, the, um, of the city region. So on the most lucrative routes, we have buses nose to tail. I think you know you're all thinking Oxford Road when I say that, and, but that is obviously the prime example, which in effect also then affects congestion and it affects cyclists and it affects uh, um, pedestrians. But then in other areas a minimal service or no service at all. So one of the things we need to think about today and you need to help me think about is how do we use the powers that are coming through uh, the bus services bill in Parliament, which we hope will get um, royal assent in the next uh, couple of months. How do we use those powers to build a bus um, at service that, that really uh, isn't just about a better service for the travelling public, but also as well integrates with other forms of transport and doesn't add to congestion. We need to think about rail services. Obviously, Greater Manchester doesn't control the train stations at the moment. Should we? I think we should, because I think we can make a better job of making them more attractive places to be. We need to think about uh, the amount of um, carriage space that there are uh, on, our, on our trains. Here's an idea, and it's only an idea, but would it make sense to use the bus lanes for people who are prepared to car share? That's something that I think is a debate that should, um, should at least be heard. Because I don't think we're going to get to where we want to be, both either from a transport point of view or from an environmental point of view, if we don't reduce the number of vehicles on the roads. I think we have to reduce the number of vehicles that are travelling into the city centre on a daily basis. And if, say, people had three or four people in a car and they were able to use the bus lanes, <coughs> would that <coughs> help? reduce the number of journeys that are being made into, uh, into um, uh, Manchester? Would that reduce congestion and pollution? But maybe it would make the buses go less fast. So maybe that's the other thing that you need to weigh up, uh, weigh up um, there. Cycling, we need to have a bigger ambition, uh, I think. Um, the idea, it was fantastic that so many of, you, many of you have cycled here today, so we've got some real experts in the room. But I think, again, if you compare to London, we are some way behind uh, the, the cycling uh, provision that is now developed in the capital uh, city. You know, over the last decade I've, decade, I've seen it with my own eyes, there's been a major change on the streets of London in terms of the numbers of people who are cycling uh, to work. However, it's not always safe for them to cycle to work, and there are regular reports in the Evening Standard of very serious accidents uh, involving cyclists. Could we learn from what's been done in London, but e do it even better here? Uh, and again, that's the question that I think we, we need to, to focus on today. One idea that I've got is whether or not, I, I think we do need to build a new cycling infrastructure across Greater Manchester. The question is how do we do it? If we were just to take lanes off the roads, that again would be pitching the cyclist versus the motorist, and I'm not sure you know, that, that, that often is a productive uh, debate. Could we, for instance, look at using old infrastructure uh, to create dedicated new cycle lanes that are away from the traffic and possibly more pleasant places uh, to use? So, for instance, old railways or old canal towpaths, whatever it might be. You know, could we look at, from all of the ten boroughs of Greater Manchester, building new dedicated separate cycle net, uh, routes into the city, obviously with secure facilities at either end to store um, uh, to park and also to, um, to, to store um, si uh, personal effects like the cycle hubs that TFGM are bringing through. The point being, can we have a bigger ambition about cycling? And if we are going to have that, what, what, is, what, would, what would ideal look like? 
And I think that's a question that I would really want everybody to think about today. Do we need to have the cycle sharing scheme that we've seen in London, or is that a bit of a, you know, a, a bit of a gimmick, or does it re would it really add to um, uh, to, to, to to cycling um, numbers? Uh, so again, all of these things that uh, that we need uh, we need uh, to think about. Are we making enough use of our waterways? On the other side of things, this does take us into um, 